In this video, we're going to be creating our first acceptance test. Now, whether this is a brand new project or you have an existing website that you want to add some tests to, the first test that I would ever do is the most basic test. And the reason for that is that you want to ensure that the test suite itself is actually working before you introduce any further complexity to it. So a nice and easy test that we that I would normally do is to load up the root web page and then test for some text on that page. So literally your test is just saying, open up the web page, make sure that text text exists. And if it does, that's a passing test. And that proves that A, your web page loads and B, the test suite is working. So to do that, we're going to go across to Codeception and we're going to generate our first test. So you may remember that you can do either assessed or accept. Now assessed is the class based um, test style, whereas a set, sept is the more straightforward inline um, code style. So we're going to go with the sept, and so we're going to do generate sept, and then we need to tell it which suite we're generating it in. So we're going to say accept, acceptance, and remember the suite is just corresponding to whichever of these directories you want to put the test into. And then we're going to say the name of our test, so we're going to call it my first test, and then it's created that. So one thing to notice there, it actually adds sept onto the end of our test file name. So you can see there, we, we specified my first test. It's actually added on my first test sept. That's super important. If you omit the last bits or the suffix there, um, well, not the suffix as such, but if you miss that bit off, the test literally will not run. It just won't see that that's a test file, which is good and bad. Um, sometimes you're like, why the hell is it not running when you've renamed it? Um, but anyway, so the first thing that I would normally do is just lowercase these eyes. Um, uh, it's just something that I always do. Just I don't know why. So it, we've, it generates as our, our basic test. And we're just going to change that to say, I want to open up the root web page and see the text Ooh, text hello great so to actually to, to actually we with mr mr bracket there um to actually do that we need to do i am on page and then the root i see hello okay so that's literally our test built and ready to go. So if we go across to our test suite and we just do a run, we can see that we've got a failing test. Now, this is interesting because you would think that that's a valid test, but let's have a look at what it's telling us. So, it, so it's failed to open up the root web page and see the text hello. Okay, so what that bit is saying there is failed to, and then it tells us this string here. So you can sort of identify the test that you're running there, um, but I'll show you a different way that I do this in a sec. Um, and then it couldn't see hello, failed asserting that slash my app. So, well, that, that's nothing that we've done. Um, the request URL my app was not found on this server. Okay, bit strange, but what this is actually telling us is we've not specified the correct URL in our acceptance suite.yaml. So we need to go in here and we need to actually put in what our web page is called. So in our case, it's code section is awesome.dev. And then actually important, we need to put in this app underscore. And then in our case, it's codecept.php. So now that that's all set up, let's double check that we've got that. Yep. Okay. And then let's try rerunning that. Okay, interesting. Another error. So what's this saying? Failed to open up the root web page again. Can't, can't be on page slash curl error. Could not resolve host. Codeception is awesome. Okay, another strange one. But what this is telling us is that uh, effectively the server where this is running, so the local server, can't resolve the host. Codeception is awesome dot dev to an IP address. So it, it can't figure out what that address should be. So what, even though, again, we're doing a codeception test, this is actually something unrelated. Um, what we need to do is go into the host file and make sure that we've got in here an IP address that maps back to that domain 
name so let's just put in here code section is awesome dot dev escape colon wq so that's saved now let's try rerunning the tests once more and this time it passes so we have our first passing test that's simply looking at the web page to check that that, that file is there uh, sorry that text is there and what as I, as I mentioned the way that I would normally do this is not actually have the the tests named like this what I do is try and match it up to whatever you're doing so in our case we're, we're looking at the home controller because you know that's that's the thing that's rendering this so I would probably go with something I mean you can choose your own sort of form factor to whatever sort of standard that you're working to but what I like to do is either do it to the home the name of the controller so I might do something like controller home and or another one might be index so let's go with index on this one because effectively this is just the root of the web page and then I put this in here and then I'd rename it like this and this is where you get caught out normally okay so the way that I name my tests as I mentioned I don't follow this this standard I would start off like this zero <laughs> and believe me I have been into the thousands so I start off like this for a reason um, zero 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 one and then I would call it can see home page text okay interesting let's try it again so we're in a subdirectory now this caught me out for ages the first time I did this and we run it no test executed and you're like well that's weird because it was working before and all we've done is moved it from the root into a subdirectory and I, I used to think when I first looked at this I was like well you can't use subdirectories this is crazy we you know you can't have everything in the root it would get super messy like really quickly so you've got to remember if you're going to rename stuff just to make sure that you've added in that that extension and then this should work again now excellent so that is how I do my tests you can as I say choose your structure um, but do do try and structure it because if you're anything like me you will create a ton of tests and it can get really unwieldy really quickly and the other reason I do it like this where you've got a, a numbered um, test like that is if we just make this test fail so let's just add some garbage in there and then rerun the test we can see straight away that we've got the index and then this this number and I just find it's so much easier just to look for that number as opposed to this string of text you can go straight across there and just be like oh yeah zero zero one so that that's that's testing that's acceptance testing as I do it at a most basic level